Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Caseware webinar. Today we are looking at the Academy Accounts Direction 2022 to 23 and the associated updates that have been added to the relevant Accounts Advanced template and um, the Audit Advanced template update um, that we're going to be hearing about a bit later on. Uh, my name is Tom Jeffrey. I'm one of the Education and Media Technicians at Caseware UK. I'm going to be making sure the webinar runs smoothly today, but I'll also be uh, looking out for your questions. Um, we'll, we'll move on to some housekeeping in a moment just to uh, just to clarify how you can submit your questions. The content is going to be delivered to you by Ashley Goldsmith, our product manager for accounts production. And a bit later on, you'll be hearing from Jonathan Miller, our product manager for audit. So, as I said, just a quick bit of housekeeping. If you wanted to submit your questions, you can do so using the Q&A button on the toolbar there. We'll uh, do our best to answer the questions live during the session. But if we don't, don't worry, we'll pop those into a Q&A document and that will go onto the help site. We are recording the session, so that Q&A document will accompany the recording on the help site and we'll pop that on there either later on today or tomorrow. And you'll be notified when that is available. We've also allotted some time at the end for Q&A. So um, please continue to, to submit your questions throughout the session and we'll answer them as soon as we can. So just jumping onto the agenda here, uh, this is split between, as I said, audit and um, accounts. We're going to be starting off with accounts. Uh, so I'll be passing over to uh, Ashley Goldsmith now and we'll have a look at the enhancements there. Thanks very much, Tom. Um, I'll just share my screen. Okay, um, so hopefully everyone can see that now. Um, so yes, um, this year's AAD um, is a fairly light touch as, as it was indeed last year. Um, but this year it's really very minimal on the uh, number of changes uh, that was going to affect the accounts within Caseware. Um, there were one or two um, changes around how things are calculated, but the actual output and the accounts themselves, um, are uh, the changes are very limited. So uh, I will actually talk you through all of the changes we've made um, over these uh, following slides, and you'll see that the changes are really not too dramatic. So first of all, um, starting on the trustees report, um, it's just a little bit of wording that's been amended on here. Um, and basically, it's just adding reference into the strategic reports within the final sentence of the opening paragraph. So literally just this and strategic report uh, extra part of the sentence has been added in uh, and that's the sole change there within the trustees report. On to the governance statement obviously what I'm doing here by the way obviously is uh, showing you extracts from our specifications rather than actual caseware um, because uh, hopefully it highlights what the changes are slightly better for you um, given that the, the changes are quite minimal. So within the governance statements, um, we've added in reference to this estates safety and management. So this extra sentence here in red uh, within the review of value for money section. And we've also removed this section here um, with with regards to uh, the summary report. So that's no longer a part of the um, AAD requirements. So therefore, we've removed that uh, from the risk and control framework section. Uh, also within the governance statement. The statement of regularity, um, we picked up that that was previously referred to as the statement on regularity. Um, so we've we've changed the title of that one um, and uh, we've made a few changes, very minor changes, including the addition here of a comma after the academy name. Uh, we've updated the wording within the third uh, sentence, um, so including for state safety and management, but we don't need to say it's received by the Academy Trust. Um, and again, within the final paragraph, we've uh, the final sentence, we've uh, added in including responsibilities for state safety and management. So very minor changes that you should obviously get through um, once you take the EPAC update and apply that to your ongoing engagement files. Um, the contents page, obviously, we've updated uh, in accordance with what we've changed there as the name of the statement. It's a statement of regularity rather than statement on regularity um, will be pulled through um, on the contents page relating to that particular area. 
on to some of the uh, accounts um uh, uh accounting policies uh basis of preparation literally the only thing that's changed is the removal of this reference here in brackets to frs 102 um it was kind of doubled up before um Republic of Ireland 102, Charity Sort 102. So that uh, additional 102 in brackets has been removed from the basis of preparation. It's no longer a requirement. In the intangible assets accounting policy, uh, we've made the vital inclusion of an additional comma after the word probable. Um, again, literally, we just did a uh, comparison of this year's AAD with last year's, and that, that came through as one of the minor changes. So we put that in as well. And then on the pension commitments accounting policy, uh, we've made some updates to the TPS section. Uh, two different paragraphs, two different paragraphs within there have we've changed. The second one, as you can see, is purely the addition of this comma. Um, but on the first paragraph, again, it's just removal of these items in blue text, which are no longer required um, as per the, the Coketown summary. And the actual note for pension commitments, um, right at the end on the LGPS section, uh, we've added in a reference now to um, gov.uk, as well as this and on the 21st of July uh, 2022. So that's, uh, that's uh, some more changes that have been put through there um, on the pension commitments note. But again, very minor changes. And that pretty much is it, believe it or not, um, for the changes that have been made in this year's AAD. Um, just to reference that a further change that's actually gone out in full within this EPAC, um, it relates to the statement of funds fix. Now, some of you might have encountered this problem in uh, after after installing the previous EPAC. Um, now, there was a scripted release that some clients did request, and you may have already installed this update. Uh, if you haven't, then that same update has been included within this EPAC. Um, now, what it will basically do is within the statement of funds note, if you have a balance, as I uh, say on screen here, if you have a balance, say, in the current year, but the fund does not have an equivalent balance in the prior year, um, erroneously, that uh, statement that that fund was appearing in both years, the current and the prior year. And the same um, the other way around. So if you had a balance in the prior year, but no balance against that fund in the current year, again, the current year fund would have been showing, um, which was not the intended uh, update, um, but something that we have now fixed fully uh, within this EPAC. So if you have experienced that issue, you don't need to um, install that scripted fix anymore. It's just included within this uh, particular EPAC uh, 40702. Just one other thing to mention, um, and it relates to the chart of accounts, which ESFA have released. Um, they've released it, I think, three or four years ago, at least now. Um, and over the years, we've had several requests as to whether we could um, auto map this to the, the equivalent case where mapping codes. Um, so the full mapping, and I've just downloaded this directly from ESFA, this, this spreadsheet here. Uh, the full mapping has somewhere in the region of 1800 account codes. Um, there's also about 180 which have now been deleted. So they were close to 2000 previously. Um, and what we've done so far is we've gone through for all of the items that we can pre-map, which is roughly about a third of those map code of those account codes. Uh, we have got this spreadsheet which is available now, which does um, auto map those to the equivalent case where mapping codes. Now, for the remainder of the codes, due to the functionality and the flexibility of our mapping within Caseware, um, it's very difficult to auto map the account codes because one client may be using the map code in a different way to another, maybe restricted versus unrestricted, for example. So hence, we've left those unmapped. But if anyone would be interested in a copy of this spreadsheet to help you auto map, if you are using ESFA's standard chart of accounts, um, then by all means, put a message in the chat today uh, and we can arrange to follow up afterwards and send you um, an updated version of this spreadsheet. Um, and hopefully that will save you at least some of the task of uh, going ahead and mapping all of those codes. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I think that's everything from me. Um, I think we'll hand over to John and then pick up any questions at the end, if that's all right, Tom. 
That's fine. We have got a question here about importing um, a trustee's report, but we can we can cover that at the end. So that's fine. Sure. OK, over to you then, John. OK, thanks, Ash. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'll share my screen now. I can. Hopefully that's all come up here. So uh, we're just going to go through the update that went out last Thursday or Friday for the Academy Audit uh, version 2402. So these are the main changes that we put through that template. Uh, again, audit the AAD 2022-23 and then the really the updates which were included in last year's templates for uh, the other templates that were relevant for ISA 315 and ISA 240 and just do a reminder really uh, of those uh, parts there so firstly the AAD 2022-23 as Ash just said not a lot in there at all um, in fact I think uh, looking at it uh, there's literally uh, two items in in the m section which are, i'm not going to go into uh, in in detail but like including um teachers assistant just clear or clarifying you keep include teachers assistant in admin and support and then uh, work on severance payments so the actual updates for for the aad were fairly minimal as I said, the most significant thing really is the this is the first time that the uh, ISA 240 and ISA 315 are applicable to uh, most academy year ends. Obviously, they start in 31st of, of August, the 31st of August. So last year it wasn't relevant. This year it is. So that's all now been been put in. So I don't know if there are any on the on the. Um, call who only do academy audits I, I expect most of you are already familiar with the changes which have been there for the past nine uh, or so months now and um and uh, but i will still go through it just for uh, i suppose a a catch up as it were uh just a reminder on on what is has gone in there uh, one thing i haven't added in which has been released in the latest mercia update uh, they created a new statistical sampling form uh, and the reason why we've, we've left that out is obviously you've always had the old judgmental sampling form in there and basically we wanted to get the content out uh, in good time uh, so so if we had to start specking that out then that would have been that would have taken us obviously a little bit longer to do so that will be coming at later times um mercia are going to be releasing that statistical sampling form within their audit manuals over the next few months anyway so we will start specking uh that to, to be included in in those templates so the first thing i suppose to be aware of then is this new numbering system um so if if this will be the first time your files your academy files will be updated with mercia's new uh, numbering system uh, that causes a few issues when you do the the update process so um, when you come, so it's very important actually that you do follow the update guide uh, as you're going through. Um, so the 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 link to the to our web page where that update guide is is available is always here. Um, whenever you're going through the update, you can click on that left hand button and you will be able to be taken to our web page. And on that web page there you um, have the update notes available to you so you can just click on those and follow those through but it is quite important that you follow those through because as i said there's quite a bit of numbering changes which causes issues that do need to be addressed uh, on each file as you do that update so that's just uh, to bear that in mind um Regarding other things that have been in introduced with the template uh, particularly on the AAD stuff it's mainly in the um, uh, disclosures and uh, in the letters uh, section so again those are available off our website as well on our download section you have to click on on the download it takes you to a separate uh, file place now where we share our files uh, where you have to input your passcode and that's the password that is used for the academy that you've got on your working papers 2022 uh, 
list of, of passwords for the academy template so you can download the the manual and and keep it uh, yourselves up to date from there so that's the new document numbering and then the rest i'll go through now is the, the stuff which we brought in um to this year's uh the, the file as i said it's isa 240 isa 315 stuff that's probably the most important uh, information and, and bits that you will need to work on and we've also now got of course the isqm documents those probably weren't relevant depending on when you you finished your audits last year but you should have probably got through most of those audits i'd have thought by, be, before the isqm uh kicked in last year so those are now obviously in there and also the the next uh, the, the next thing that mercy have introduced this time and it is actually related to isqm um is the component auditor assessment and communication documents those haven't been included in the academy template in the past and they have now included those and will include those in other manuals uh, other templates which don't currently have those in them uh, and the reason for that is again related to quality management you need to show your your quality management over uh, component auditors. So this is where you will be perhaps the, the auditor of the uh, main academy trust, and then perhaps individual academies potentially are um, all, uh, are audited by, by someone else. Um, that might not be the case for most of you, and in which case you can just simply uh, use the, the tailoring, uh, in prelim tailoring, and those bits will, will disappear from the file. However, I have got a file with those in, and so I'm going to just have a brief reminder, really, of of the type of documents that that were there, um, that that have been in the files for the last um, few years, uh, last year. Um, if I actually gave a a webinar probably about this time exactly last year, I think all but one day, where uh, which went through those documents in a bit more detail again those are still on our website so if you go to the the company audit uh, page on our web page you will be able to find the, the webinar uh, where we did that last time but i'll just go through the some of these documents now so for instance we've got the b24 which is where you record your design implementation of controls these are split out between those that address uh, risk of material misstatement and uh, uh, in the IT environment. And you simply just record, you just include your controls in there. We still have the, the B24-1, which is where you record all your controls as you're going through, uh, but those will come out um, and then you will need to include the ones that you wish to assess um, on, on this section here and you just expand those sections you included and you you then implement and these bits add on depending on as you're going through whether it's designed effectively it's implemented uh, and the like and whether you're actually going to test that operating effectiveness so that's just something to uh, remember I've actually got a document here which uh, is sort of Mercia's um, it's actually from their procedures manual uh, which gives a, an assessment of, of risk that you do as you're going through so as you're assessing risk which is what we'll come on to next so that's the new b30 you'll be looking at all your risks as you're going through your your permanent section and these will all feed in as you're working your way down uh, through through that planning you look at your fraud risk which is again a new document uh, and the going concern risk materiality everything here can't guesstimates and all of that will flow then into these two documents the b24 and the b30 so i'll go to the b30 now got it open here so again this is where you now record or your risk your inherent control risk assessment as before as with the uh controls you've still got your risk report so as you're going through that planning as you're going through you'll raise your your all your risk as you're going through you record them on there there's a new uh the the new structure the new scoring system one to five and the likelihood and magnitude of of misstatement are are to be recorded on there that all feeds feeds through here but then you will need to then transfer any that you wish to 
start drilling down at the assertion level it might not do it won't be all the risk but on some some of those significant ones that you wish to in, in investigate at that level you will then add them to this um this screen and this is you've got some of the the financial statement level and then the risk and material statement at the assertion level and again you just add these uh, these detail and really this allows you to add that narrative which you can't just add into the the dialogue at the moment so that's why this is this is formed so you can add in here and you just add extra risks as you go through and as i said you want to perhaps transfer some of the detail that you've recorded on the risk dialogue into here so you can make that um, narrative uh, assessment that then ultimately feeds through to our b30 uh, fsa uh, where you will now have your all your risks so any any risks that you've got raised you can you can highlight here and it will it will indicate wh what those are and double click on that will also bring up the the dialogue um you've got three columns here for the inherent risk control risk and the risk of material mistake the residual risk and as you've been going through and scoring those risks on, on the dialogues um they will then allow you to get a proposed um, risk level for each individual assertion that you've you've highlighted in your risk as you've been going through so you click on that and that will then fill this out depending on those those scores that you've been giving your risks they are overwritable so you can always um, overwrite any of these but they will be flagged then in a red box you then got your control risk now generally it may well be that, that that will be not applicable if that is not applicable then the the residual risk should be exactly the same as the inherent risk but if you have a a low risk because you're going to be doing some controls work or something like that that can then mitigate the the risk level for that particular assertion and again you can you can then select a propose and so you you'll see what's happened here is that we've gone i'm just going to just in case um, you guys can't see that very clearly, just zoom that in a little bit. So, um, so for instance, we we had an original score of five for the the completeness, but because we're going to do some control less testing, that became lower. So the overall risk became uh, a level three. With the others, though, because we didn't do any, the level remains the same. Again, you can overwrite these, so you can always uh, make a change. And once again, it will be highlighted in red. And that then feeds through into your uh, work program, and those numbers will come up across the top here. And also it will indicate again, as, as you're probably aware of how the this response table works, if you haven't got an assertion addressing, uh, if you haven't got a, any procedures assessing a, a, affecting a particular assertion, uh, then you can you can click on that and then you can find those which are still hidden uh, all the way in the content library and you can bring those in into your file. Um, so that's the the main ISA three one five stuff. You've also got the B thirty four now, the fraud risk assessment that's uh, required to be uh, completed now as well. And you've got a load of factors at the top here uh, under the little uh, plus minus buttons. And then I suppose the next important thing, really, that that's been introduced, as I said, was the um, component order. To, uh, the component auditor stuff um we we do have the isqm so first of all the bo3 that's that's to be completed now that's based on isqm so that's replaced uh the old b14 so that's now bo3 just for isqm work and uh, the a212 which is again the review of that quality review basically it's just dropped all the words where, where it referred to engagement quality control review so it's now called qual engagement quality review but that has been expand, expanded uh, quite a bit in terms of, of your conclusions to to raise there. In terms of the um, the stuff that's been introduced for for uh, component auditors, of course, we've always had the the PF one five, but now the PF one five is the old uh, risk assessment for groups. So I think that was a B thirty to pf3 or something like that in the past uh, that's now been moved to pf15 uh, the old pf15 has been absorbed uh, the the um relevant section of the the pf1-4 which is the related parties group stuff has now been incorporated uh, into that document 
but you've got your groups um, and then you've also got your component audits. You've also got your component risk assessment as well. So the B30 document is where you will record the significant components that you have. And if you in identify those being as significant, that then flows through into the rest of the, the work that you will be doing. So you'll, you will look at uh, your B26, your, your assessment with, with component auditors, uh, uh, sorry, your, your communication with, with component orders and review of risk, uh, you'll need to be, be filling that out. You've also got the PF19, which is again, summary of work that you're working with your component auditors. And uh, as I said, any significant ones that you've identified will then come into that document and appear in there. And then you will record all the detail about those. Um, and then there's also the component um, uh, auditor materiality uh, as well. And I think that's a B25 one. Yes, that's there. So those, those will be highlighted in here as well. And then finally, uh, the last document will be the A53. And that's the, the communication that you have with your component auditors. So really, that's just a whistle stop tour. Uh, uh, from all these uh, additions that have come in. As I said, most of you perhaps all familiar with those anyway. This component auditor stuff is in the group, is in the company templates regardless. Uh, but it might just be something that you need to, uh, if you've got specialist teams that are doing academies, that you'll need to just uh, brief those that, that what uh, the things that they need to be aware of. I think that's okay from me. Thanks very much, Jonathan. So um, I'm just going to jump back to my slides uh, eventually. So I'm just going to share just um, a, a reminder of how to submit your questions. We haven't had any additional questions come in, um, but we'll just go through the question that came in earlier on. Um, uh, Ash has kindly answered in the uh, in the Q&A there. But the question was, uh, is it or will it be possible to import a PDF trustees report or governance statement into the accounts in place of the case with standard? Um, the answer being um, it's not possible to import a PDF uh, because of formatting and um, page numbering uh, not functioning um, correctly with the remainder of the accounts. But there is the option to use the free form trustees report. And that is detailed. Uh, the, de the details of how to apply that is in our help site article 554. Um, we also had a couple of uh, people in the Q&A there asking for the uh, spreadsheet with the S for chart of accounts. So we'll be in touch very shortly to provide you with that. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to go through, I think we've got a couple of minutes left. So I'll go through the wrap up. We'll just do a bit of signposting and you can continue to submit your questions right until we stop broadcasting. So um, please use the Q&A there if you have any other questions as I go through the next few slides. So just a couple of signposts. You're probably aware of these already, but we do have a LinkedIn page. So that's um, Client Services Caseware UK Limited. And that is where we um, post news about the business, uh, information about latest updates. We also um, give you information about upcoming webinars. We've got our YouTube channel again, Client Services Caseware UK. And we have lots of playlists there of quick vids and other videos, but we also have a webinar playlist. So this recording will be making its way on there in the next day or so. And finally, we have our help site, so help.caseware.co.uk, and that's where you're going to find um, lots of resources there that are um, open to use without logging in. Again, the recording of this webinar and any accompanying documentation will be uploaded to there in the next day or so. If uh, you uh, need any access to any downloads, then that would be via your super user for your firm, where you can get in touch with our support if you feel that you need access to downloads but everything else is available without a login. We have had a flurry of questions come in. Um, so I'll see if we can cover one or two before we- uh, before They're all we... requests, basically. For the They're all requests for the spreadsheet. <laughs> basically, so, except the last excellent. one for the slides. Okay, um, so in terms of a copy of the slides, um, I, we can be in touch to um, provide you with the key information from the slides. That's no problem. And as I say, the recording will be made available in a couple of places very shortly. That brings us to the half an hour. So that was good timing. So thank you very much for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed it today and found it useful. Take care and we'll see you next time.